hi guys welcome to my beautiful display i love my display here it gives me that beautiful work feel so i figure what is the best time to do a video and that's why i'm sitting here on launch yep it's exactly how my day's going um <laughs> welcome back to my channel welcome if you're new i have been saying for a long time i was going to make these leasing videos whether it was for prospects whether it's for people who are already in the industry trying to get in the industry but I figure I got a little bit of experience in this. I'm almost six years in, so I figure I can give you a little bit of tidbit. Plus, I'm still new new, so I can still give you the real. Because I feel like some people, as they move up the ladder, they forget what it's like to be at ground zero, <laughs> you know. So, I want to do this while I'm still closer to ground zero than I am, you know, to the sky. So here we go. Um, if you haven't read by the title, this video will be definitely about leasing if you're trying to get in as a professional. Um, so yeah, this will be a whole series on my channel. I'm hoping to bring you more content, but it seems like the only way to do it is if I do it during work because it's the only time I have free because after, after, once I get home, I have no idea what's going to happen to my day. So yeah, um, so I'm super excited to do this for you guys, okay? But... A little rundown about me. I have been in the industry almost six years. June 30th will be my six year in. I was a leasing agent for four years and then for the last year and so many months I have been an assistant property manager. Super excited. Um, I love this industry. I love it. Every day brings me something new. I always like being excited to come to work, seeing what chaos will go on. It's definitely helped me in my personal life with dealing with difficult people or things like that because I have to professionally. But in my personal life, I'm a little reckless. So this has definitely helped me to keep the balance because you never know who you're going to run into on the street. So I definitely love this industry. There's so many different ways you can get in and then expand because you don't have to stay in leasing. You can move up the ladder. You can move into different areas of this industry. I promise you, if you ever get bored in one part, just move. Multifamily is easy. And we survive everything. Right now... Unfortunately, everybody's going crazy about the coronavirus, but we're still here. We're still touring people. We're still welcoming you into your new home, and we're going we're gonna to ride it out. It is always a definite job in multifamily. People are always going to need a new apartment, <laughs> so I love it. Um, I've had many of my mentors and property managers have been in the industry 10 plus years, so I've taken knowledge and questions that I've gotten from them, and I'm going to share with you guys. So this is definitely coming not just from a newbie, but somebody who's who's did their time in the industry and who's continues to love this industry. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Alrighty, titles. So your title will be leasing professional, leasing, leasing agent or leasing consultant. It just depends on the company or the property manager of what they would like to call you. That is the entry level to this industry is being a leasing staff member. Um, and your job, your main job is gonna be filling them apartments and touring, baby girl. But we'll get to that a little bit later in this video. Experience in this industry definitely depends. I personally, when I started, my property manager didn't want me to have any kind of experience. Because you learn a lot of bad habits. And at first I was like, what habits could you possibly learn about doing something that's very repetitive every day? You'll change it up, of course, to make it exciting. But for the most part, everything's one, two, three. Um, and then now, six years in, I'm like, oh, I see you. I see all those bad habits that I definitely accumulated along the way that I still learn. You know, I'm like, oh, let's just do it this way. It's so much easier. As long as the work, for me, if I'm working with somebody who shortcuts, as long as the work gets done beautifully and I don't have to redo it, we're good. If I have to keep redoing it, I'm like, no, no, boo, you need to do it the right way. That's just how I feel. Um, you will need to have customer service background, sales background, and of course, people skills. Now, some people, both people skills and customer service in one, I do not. Because you have people who work in a call center who are beautiful at it. And then you have people who work face-to-face -face with people, and that is not their strength, honey. Customer service, of course, it, it spreads out based on your job. But um, having people skills is a big deal. Uh, because you're working with people's prized possession that is their home and you will get them at the most happy cheeriest moments and you will get them in total rage and you have to know how to diffuse the situation you will have an office full of people you learn and let me say something they took you through these training videos and they're great I pull some things for some of them but other times you literally are just winging it and it works <laughs> I'm gonna be honest um, but I love, I would never trade anything in this industry for anything. 
love it. Um, there is no age requirement depending on the company. I started at 21, but for most properties, you just have to ask what that age requirement is to work in their office. Um, but yeah, those are the easiest way to do it. Um, with with experience, it just comes with uh, the programs. You may have to learn different programs and be experienced with certain things. Excel is a big one across the board at any, any industry. Um, but with us, with multifamily, you're working on the low income side. You may be working in luxury. You may be working on a college, mainly property um, where they have mostly college students or, you know, teenagers or people elderly. You know, you never know because there's it's so wide range. Yeah, I will say this over and over again. There is so many different parts of this industry. It's crazy. But you have to have people skills to deal with every person. Okay. Everybody wants to know the most important part. And that's that pay. Let's move on. So, pay, pay depends on, again, the company. You will hear me say that a million and one times. Pay. Um, you can be salary, you can be hourly, you can be commission, you can be a combination of very of those many. Some people say commission, bonus is different. Um, now, I don't want to get too far into it, but you are taxed differently in this industry and for commissions and bonuses and things like that. So, do keep in mind and definitely ask those, those hard-hitting questions. Um, so... You just want to know that, but there is many different ways you can commission in this industry, and that just depends on your company. Um, you can commission for renewals, move-ins. Um, they can have incentives for certain units that sit longer than the next, um, for certain styles. Um, when you get done, you could get paid so much. You're just like sometimes you can commission check and go, I don't remember moving in all the people, <laughs> but I did that. <laughs> um, and of course, you can get accolades and awards. And that may pay you as well. That may increase your pay if you've had um, awards in the past or get awards. So just know, this I love this industry, y'all. I'm going to keep saying that. Alrighty, guys. With the dress code, uh, it depends on your company, again. But most majority of them is business casual. Now, I have been to properties where I've seen people in yoga pants and a t-shirt. I've been to properties where I've seen a girl, I'm like, honey, are are you working for the president? Like, wh why are we dressed like this? Like, But it depends on the property's requirements. For my company, we're very business casual. Um, and then we have uniform shirts, which you've seen in my vlogs. Um, we have jackets and everything has our company logo on it. So it just depends. A lot of times we don't have to wear our company logo. We don't have to do any of that, but business casual is always gonna be hands down across the board. Now some of them may have like strict, like you can't wear heels over this height. You can't wear flats or sandals like this. You can't, you know, they may have a stricter dress code within those guidelines, but for the most part, business casual. Just know Alrighty. Now, Alrighty. the most important part of this whole thing is what does an actual day as a leasing agent look like? What what does that day look like? Well, I'm about to run it down and know that I'm about to look at my notes because I have I have a list, y'all. I have a list. So this is in no particular order because one thing with this industry is it's never gonna be in an order. I'm gonna tell you that right now. There isn't. I come in every day and I know what time my office opens and I know what time my office closes. Now. Will I get everything that I have planned out done? Probably not. When I get it done, am I usually surprised? Heck yes. But um, for the most part, and I'll go into each one of these um, into a little more detail um, of what you have to do within those. So a day in the life, you're opening displays, you're responding to emails, you're responding to missed phone calls, checking in packages, e-leads, tours, typing welcome letters, typing leases, typing notice to vacate, making work orders, completing work orders, following up with prospects and work orders, walking move-ins, walking vacants, walking the property and your tour path, um, helping residents, restocking refreshments if you need to, setting up displays and mini models, coming up with marketing ideas. Um, you are going out and shopping the uh, comps, you know, you're keeping on top of your comps. And there's probably more that I forgot, but those are kind of the basic ones. If you're in the industry and I forgot something, definitely link it down below. I am gonna make a list on the side so you guys got it and be like, did she get everything? There's so many different aspects of what you're doing in your job and then that seems like a lot, but some days that doesn't seem like enough, especially on a boring jewelry day like today where me and my um, leasing agent got through a bunch of stuff and we're still thinking of more to do every day. So let's start at the very top. Uh, 
Alrighty. So, opening displays. So with opening your display, you are walking your tour path. So you want to walk up to anything that you're showing. If you're making a mini model, which is, so a full furnished apartment is what we call the display or model. Um, and then mini models just have like small little intricate pretty things, which I will take you through a couple. I think I have um, here. If you've looked at my vlogs, you see me open the display and then my mini model is very different. Uh, but you want to walk up to the buildings, kind of see if there's any trash, if the grass is a little ugly, if, you know, the door handle needs to be painted, things like that. You put those tickets in so it always looks pretty for the next person. Again, everything won't be fixed in that very second, but at least if you can get your maintenance guys on it later, you can get it done. If it's something that you can do, feel free to do it if your company allows you to. I have no problem picking up a paintbrush and painting something. I have no problem being like, oh, this closet door is off track, popping it back on track. Of course, don't do any of this while you're on tour, but it's okay to do it when you're opening in the morning. If the apartment needs air fresh, if the apartment needs the carpets clean, make sure you schedule that with your property manager and let them know, or you can schedule it. Um, walking up and opening your display is that's your product that you're selling. And I always look at it as if, would I move into this apartment? No, I'm out. Whether you're showing a mini model, the display, a completely baking unit, you always want to make sure it's pretty. It's, of course, the first thing that people do is they're going to see and smell. You always want to make sure it smells good. So, when you're opening the displays, it's a lot to that. Alrighty? Um, responding to emails. There are two ways to respond to emails. You either have, you will have an online system that everything syncs into, which is kind of like your e-leads. Um, when people go check availability for apartments.com or things like that, um, for any search in apartment.com, apartment listing, for rent, rent.com, it's a million of them. But when they click check availability, it sends you what we call an e-lead. Um, and you will respond to that. But then you also have like an Outlook account, a Gmail, a Yahoo, depending on your company. Um, and you respond to emails that may have come through via Craigslist or residents. So you're responding to both of those emails in the, in the beginning of the day. Phone calls. The phone starts ringing. As soon as the sun comes up, I've had voicemails for people that were calling at 6 30 in the morning. And I'm thinking you Googled us. So you knew we didn't open till like nine to the clock and you already left a voicemail, but you go ahead and you call those people back. If they left a voicemail, even if they didn't leave a message, you call back and say, Hey, we had a missed call from this number. How can I help you? Um, and sometimes it just may be a wrong number. Other times people are really surprised when you do call them back and they're like, because I found out some companies don't do that. They just be like, oh, they leave voicemail, it's out. Call back. Promise you, you get them leads, boo. Um, but phone calls. Packages, our property gets nonstop packages. Some companies have, some not companies, some properties have like a package system check-in for the delivery companies. We don't, we do it all personally, so we have to do it ourselves. Um, tours, you want to make sure your scheduled tours from your e-leads are set up for the day. You know what you're showing, you know what time they're going to be there. And sometimes you do have walk-ins. So that's always fun because you can be in the middle of doing something. But unfortunately, when that tour comes in, you kind of have to make sure your space is clean and ready to go to take them on the tour. Uh, typing welcome letters. Again, this all depends on companies. We type welcome letters from our company. We type leases, of course, um, and we type up confirmation of notice to vacate so when they tell us they're gonna leave we have a cute little letter that we put together that tells all their kind of average final fees because our watershed trash is um charged based on usage and things like that um some companies everything is done completely online so that helps if it is or your property manager takes care of that part but if you do that is one of the things that you will do you will type up a lot of stuff and you'll print it out um you'll be doing renewals renewal leases, renewal paperwork, things like that. Again, with your company, it just depends, but you're always typing something up, some kind of form for people to sign, okay? Uh, making work orders. You have people calling in work orders. You have them putting it online, so you may have to print it out. Um, completing work orders. You putting in notes to complete it. Um, my company, we also send out surveys with it, so we always love that, um, that we know how our guys are doing out in the field. Following up with prospects, so you're following up with people who sent the e-lead who may have yet to reply and you've already sent them, like they'll send you something, you reply to them and they haven't replied, so you'll follow up with them, you know, via phone call, via another email, um, work orders, you'll call and ask people, hey, I, I seen this work order got completed yesterday, we just wanted to see how, you know, was it good? That's another thing that I've seen a lot of companies don't do, they don't call when work orders are completed, it's another great tactic. 
so that your residents know you care because sometimes something may go down but they'll remember that one time you called them and asked them about that work order and whatever they're screaming about won't seem so big I promise it's the little things that people remember that you're like you probably won't because you'll be going through your day and they'll be like I remember you were so nice to me when this happened in my apartment and you're thinking like I don't remember that but I'm glad I could help <laughs> kind of deal so we love that um walking move into vacants you always want to walk your move into vacants again that's your product you know at the end of the day when you have a move in that particular person is going to come strictly to you that you've grown that rapport with them that you are their person of contact they don't care that there's for the people in the office and you have six people looking at you they don't care they know that they want to speak to you and that's it and you have those residents who strictly don't like to speak to the other people and you have those residents who don't care they're like anybody who can help me um and it's always great to have that rapport with people so yeah um let's see walking the property you always want to walk the property period a lot of times you get tunnel vision with walking properties because you see the same thing but other times you may walk a different path and be like oh i've never seen this or your property manager your maintenance techs are busy so they can't see everything and again it's your product i always say it's my property because it is at the end of the day people look at me if i'm the only person in the office they're like why didn't you fix the gutter i'm like because i didn't know it was down or because it's out of my control but i can't tell people that you know, I had to be like, oh, I'm so sorry that that happened. Let me get right on it. That's all they want to hear. <laughs> so walk your property. Make sure you see. Sometimes you can you can help and be like, oh, what if next year we can put up a dog park? We can put this up. You see things at other properties. Um, like when you shop comps, um, you'll hear that. You go to other properties and just get their information. Pretend to be um, a prospect for them. And you get to see what they have versus what you have. And you can bring some of that back to your property and put that on. You know, if they have a sign, you can maybe get a sign. Your property manager may be able to get a sign. Uh, it's a lot. Never feel like because you're at an entry level that you're the bottom person. At the end of the day, you're the person who sees the property the most. You're the person who sees people and hear people's concerns and compliments and complaints all the time. So remember, you are the number one person. I know companies say that, and sometimes I'm like, shoot me with that speech, because I've heard it too many times. But honestly, you are, you're the head of this company. No matter who sits at the top as a CEO, they don't know what's really going on in these properties. They know the bottom line, that's about it. But you know exactly what's going on with your property and what people want to see, want to hear, want to look like, want to anything. Um, helping residents, that never stops ever ever and some of them do not care that you're helping a prospect some of them don't care that you're helping a co-worker they want your attention now and you have some of those residents who will wait for eternity for you to get done doing whatever you're doing so but you're always there's always somebody in and out of your office so um depending on how your office is laid out you may have your own space you may be in an open space but just know you always have somebody right in front of you and you're just like hi um Oh, excuse me. Restocking refreshments. Um, you will have to do that if your property stocks. Um, they're called wild fridges or wild cabinets where you go into a display. You've probably been on a tour and there's food and stuff in the in the apartment. You have those. Uh, you may have to restock that. Coffee in your office or things like that. Any kind of refreshment food you may have to restock throughout the day. And that's that comes with your job. Cleaning up spills really quick or, you know, vacuuming up stuff. Again, making your product look good that is that is your biggest job uh so yeah and all i can tell you is to pretty much sum it all up in a day-to-day -day being a leasing agent or working in property management it is like having a plan to babysit a three-year-old or a toddler of any kind and they're come to you on a sugar high every plan you have is out the window just just don't plan your day just know you're gonna come into work you're gonna smile and you're gonna love every second of it so if I left out anything, if you want to know, if you have any other questions, definitely leave me a comment down below. And I will see you next time in my next video. Bye, guys. Whoa.